What's up guys, Alec Curry here. And I'm sure by now most of you have seen our boy Eric Konevsky, AKA the most optimal person in history, has by popular demand finally revealed his PED set that he used to prepare for his most recent bodybuilding show. And I received multiple requests from people asking me for my opinion on, I don't even know really, I guess, how crazy I think it is that someone would willingly take that many drugs for no real reason. But anyway, I figured I'd weigh in because I think that my opinion on the whole thing might actually surprise some of you. So anyway, I watched Eric's video where he reveals his long-awaited stack, and I also watched his newer video where he responds to some guy that I don't know, Greg Doucette or Duchet or something like that. I didn't go to his channel, but from the context, I gathered that he's a bodybuilding guru of sorts, but that's not really important to what I want to discuss in particular. But anyway, though, I know I've clowned Eric in the past just for his general antics and the persona that he puts on and some of the dumb shit that he does on camera. And I'm sure that many of you are probably expecting that that's what I'm going to do here, but I'm not. At least I don't plan to. I've had my words twisted by biased ass kissers in the past, though. So we'll see where we end up after I post this video, but it's not my intention. But anyway. The funny part about all of this is, I actually kind of respect Eric. Now, I don't agree with what he's doing to himself. I think it's an odd thing to want, and I think it's an interesting way to choose to go through life, and let's just leave my judgment at that. But I do respect his conviction, and his drive, and his dedication to get where he wants to be. I just think he'd be better off directing those things elsewhere. But that's his decision to make, not mine. I also respect the fact that he chose to stop playing the pretend natty card with his recent string of videos. Obviously most people understood from his previous responses that he wasn't actually claiming to be natural, but like I've said a bunch of times at this point, it only takes a cursory glance at one of his old comment sections to find plenty of people who just don't get it. People who actually believe, or I guess now believed, that he was natural. And honestly, why shouldn't they? If you're completely green in this game, how would you actually know who's natural and who's not? Because you have no real or accurate frame of reference. Many pro bodybuilders claim to be natural because PED usage is illegal in many places, and they'll lose their sponsorships if they cop to it. Douchey Michael fucking Hearn claims to be natural, and he's fucking everywhere. More casual fitness enthusiasts know who he is than pretty much anybody else. But So all you can go by is what people are telling you. And if everyone who's popular in the industry is telling you that they're natural, no matter how obvious it is to you or to me that they're not, if you have no experience or you're just a young and gullible kid, then you're going to believe them. But so to me, it was just irresponsible of him to play it off and pretend to be natural. Personally, if I were in his shoes, I would have chosen to just keep my mouth shut and ignore any steroid related questions entirely, seeing as how I wouldn't be too keen on admitting on camera that I was performing an illegal activity anyway. And eventually the subscriber base would have come to the correct consensus that he's obviously on some shit and that would have been a sufficient way to play it. Like on the old game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The best and most reliable lifeline was always to ask the audience. The consensus pretty much always comes to the correct answer. And that's better than trolling about how you're natural because obviously some people just don't get it. Just like how some people clearly don't get that I'm trolling with all the chimp raises and the Ankiri curls. And while you could argue that the trolling here that I'm doing is just as irresponsible of me as what Eric was doing, at least I'm making a point with those videos. And to be honest, even if you don't necessarily agree with that point and you think what I'm doing is dumb there, you kind of have to admit that the fact that so many people just don't get that I'm clearly joking with those videos actually proves that point, which is that stuff that's similar enough to that sort of dumb shit, often backed by science, is so pervasive across the fitness industry that people actually thought that that could be real. I thought I had gotten ridiculous enough with my examples that almost everyone would realize I was trolling, but we still had a few stragglers. Anyway though, let's clear it up here once and for all. On Kiri curls and chimp raises, were a fucking joke. Please don't do them. They're stupid and they won't help you in any way, shape, or form. 
Moving on to the main topic though, what I really want to talk about today is the public service that Eric has done here by revealing his stack. I don't know too much about PEDs, but I do know that at one point he put a list on the screen in that video that showed that he was taking 17 different drugs at once, nine of which were anabolic steroids with a total weekly dosage exceeding 10 motherfucking grams. And that 10 grams is just the steroids. That doesn't include the growth hormone, the three estrogen controlling drugs that he listed, the daily stack of ephedrine, caffeine, and aspirin, or the clenbuterol. And that's a lot of fucking drugs. It's a shitload of different drugs to have in your system at once, and it's an obscene amount of total volume of drugs to take over the course of a week, and it's all being done for no legitimate reason. Personally, I feel guilty if I take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen in a week, and this dude is over here popping over 10,000 milligrams of this fucking cocktail every single week like it ain't no thing. And at first, I honestly thought he would be trolling with this video too. I thought he would list some crazy and impossible cycle just to troll some more and fuck with people because that just seems to be his general MO. But after watching the reveal video and observing how he talked about the cycle and the points that he chose to make in regard to it, and then watching his response video to the Greg Duchette dude, where he was repeatedly adamant that this was his actual cycle and that he's not lying or fabricating anything and he's 100% confident that all of his drugs were legit, I have to say that I believe him. And like I said, I'm not judging. You do you, man. But I do think that Eric, without even realizing it, has done a huge public service here. He basically says to us in the video that this is bodybuilding. It just is what it is, and he's showing it to us unfiltered. He implies that there are plenty of people who take this absurd amount of drugs in his world. They're just not telling you about it, but he is. And why shouldn't we believe him? He's a part of that world. And presumably he talks shop with other guys who are as well. And I'm sure that they all bounce ideas off of each other, just like with any other endeavor. I mean, how the heck else could he have ever come to the conclusion on his own that it could possibly be a good idea to ever take this many drugs all in such large quantities and all at once, unless someone else who's already done it passed that information on to him first. I'm not saying that this isn't a possibility, but it would be a little ridiculous to just jump right into something like that on your own and with no prior knowledge, unless you had been advised to at some point along the line by someone who's already been there. Like with any other activity, these people are creating and refining a pool of knowledge, passing that knowledge on from one generation to the next, and then standing on each other's shoulders to get a leg up in the game rather than having to start from square one and figure it all out on their own. Only in this case, the pool of knowledge that they're creating and refining is mostly just drug usage. What drugs to take, how much to take, and when to take them. It's probably foolish. It's probably gonna come back and bite you in the ass in some fashion at some point down the line, but apparently it just is what bodybuilding is. So Blaha has been right all along. It really is just a contest to see who can tolerate taking the most drugs. And Eric has shown us what it is and he has revealed the truth. So my takeaway from that whole thing, now armed with this knowledge of the truth, is what sane individual would possibly ever decide to venture down that road. Basically, what I got out of his videos was one big long PSA that screamed to me, stay the hell away from this shit. And I hope for everyone else's sake that they also got the same message. Unless the idea of, and I'm not exaggerating here, literally becoming a drug addict, Risking your freedom and potentially serving substantial jail time if you live in the U.S. or other places where it's illegal, for going a large portion of your monthly income simply to sustain a massive drug habit, risking your long-term and possibly even short-term health and well-being and quality of life, permanently destroying your endocrine system, and basically being a slave to an around-the-clock daily drug schedule that probably makes you feel like shit all day every day as well, all for the potential of maybe earning a little bit of cash and a moderate amount of short-lived notoriety if and only if 
you can become one of the absolute best, which, let's be realistic, isn't going to fucking happen. Unless this all sounds like your idea of fun or a quality life that's worth living, then it's probably best to stay the hell away from bodybuilding. You know, lift weights, get strong and swole and athletic, and just be healthy. Personally, I'm proud to be a little Jimmy, as Eric so lovingly calls it. And then hold on to that shit for as long as you possibly can. It's not gonna give you happiness or overall life satisfaction in and of itself, but it will give you the potential for a very high quality of life that lasts for the longest possible time. And that will give you more time to search for and find those things. And in the end, what more can you really ask for? In relative terms, we don't get much time here. So you can choose to YOLO your shit like Eric and his bodybuilding brethren have done, or you can choose to maximize those years and maximize the quality of those years. Personally, I think there's something to be said for reaching old age and having your health when you get there. I think there's a level of enlightenment that we're granted when we get there that ultimately provides us with the satisfaction that we're constantly searching for our whole lives. And I think that we owe it to the people around us to do what we can to stick around and be with them for as long as we possibly can. And none of that's going to happen if you decide to go the route of the bodybuilder, or at least the chances of it happening are severely, severely diminished. So best of luck to you, Eric. Truly, I wish you good health and I wish you the best. But that live fast, die young, pretty corpse bullshit, that's just what it is. It's bullshit. You get one shot at this. Why on earth would you choose to skip out on so much of it? And so everyone else, pay attention and heed the warning that Eric has given us. In my opinion, there's nothing that could possibly ever make that lifestyle an undertaking that's worth suffering the consequences that are inevitably going to be attached to it. Health is something that's very easy to take for granted until you no longer have it. I've witnessed this decline for myself, and I can tell you in no uncertain terms, there is nothing pretty or admirable or noble about going out like that. It's downright fucking ugly. It's humiliating. It's burdensome. It's degrading. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Remember, it's easy to mistake something as appearing worthwhile when a person is riding the peak of the wave, but eventually, inevitably, that wave that they're on is going to crash. And when it does, a lifetime of poor judgment, bad decisions, and regret is gonna pour over them like a ton of fucking bricks. Don't let that happen to you. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.